Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Arnold with Business Club, and today our special guest is Steve Cody. So Steve Cody has built and sold six different rental companies over his career as an entrepreneur. After recently founding a successful franchise software technology company, Steve decided to combine the two companies. Steve has now created Rectify, his ultimate dream of giving everyone the opportunity to experience a financial and ecological rewards of sharing something that you own with others. So we may be asking, what is, what is Ruckify all about? Buy less, experience more. So Ruckify is the world's largest online peer-to-peer -peer rental marketplace, empowering its members to embrace and sharing economy and leave unnecessary purchases behind. Designed with both people and businesses in mind, anyone can post their items and spaces on Ruckify for people in their community to rent. Founded in Ottawa, Canada in 2018 on a foundation of community building, environmentalism, education, and freedom, Ruckify is dedicated to changing the world and curtailing the spread of unsustainable consumerism. The platform has also launched Tree Project, a commitment from Ruckify to plant a tree for every transaction made on the application, allowing everyone to be part of the mission towards a greener, healthier earth. We are passionate about giving everyone the opportunity to start their own business, own rental business through the Ruckify app while helping the environment. Renting instead of buying helps lower the carbon footprint. And we believe that sharing economy will ultimately have a profound positive impact on our planet. On our planet. So please welcome uh, Steve Cody of Ruckify. Great to have you, Steve, with our, our call today. Thank you for having me on, Paul. Excellent. So I know that you're a very experienced uh, business owner, and do you want to tell us a bit about your uh, your journey through uh, through you know the your your businesses and what lessons you've learned uh, uh, over over time? Yeah, I mean for for me it started pretty early. So uh, you know, grew up with a single mom in Ottawa, uh, dyslexic uh, by grade ten. I kind of figured that uh, you know high school probably wasn't a good idea for me, uh, but my grandfather had put away $10 a month into the bank, into a bank account so that I could go to university. Um, so at some point in grade 10, I went to him and I said, look, there's $1,200 in the bank. Um, I don't think I'll be going to university. Uh, can I take that money and start a window cleaning company? So basically taking the $1,200 out, uh, bought a squeegee bucket and a ladder and uh, started a company called Cody Window Cleaning, uh, which is still around today. I think they're the largest window washing company in Ottawa still. Um, so that's really where it started. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, started going door to door, um, cleaning windows and uh, kind of grew that into doing commercial window cleaning. Uh, that led to uh, a scaffolding rental company, a swing stage rental company, a lift company. Um, you know, so we kind of built different companies. <clears throat> by the time I was 30 years old, uh, sold a lift company to Hertz. Uh, equipment rentals, which was owned by Ford at the time, uh, took a year off. Uh, my mom was getting married, didn't really like the experience in terms of renting tables and chairs. So I said, you know what, I think I'll start a party rental company, deliver a better experience. Uh, that turned into Cody Party Rentals, which I think we're celebrating 21 years now. Um, you know, so we did that. That led to, uh, you know, we Monster Halloween, Cody Mobile. A uh, couple of different things along the way, so it's been uh, it's been quite a ride. Wow, that's a that's a pretty amazing. I am I, I actually work for a window cleaning company myself in Kingston, Ontario. Oh, cool. It was one of my uh, jobs uh, when I was in university, so I can totally relate. I mean, it's a great uh, a great business to uh, to be in uh, because everyone you know like likes to get their windows clean, but it's fairly yeah. uh, it's not too much overhead and. Uh, and I like yourself. I'm like a. I, I go door to door to market my business. I've done. I started five business financial services, and all like uh, three of them, I was door knocking to uh, to meet people. And and you know, it's a great. Even though I mean, it's uh, not that the you may have a lot of people kind of like brush you aside, but it's a great way to meet people in the community. And uh, you know, if if, if you have a, a, a respectable business, um, then there's no no problems to 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 do that now. Moving forward to now, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't see, I imagine you're doing much door knocking now for, for Ruckify. Um, what's the best way to, uh, you know, to market uh, your, your, your online business? 
Yeah, I mean, so now uh, we started Ruckify, uh, well, it was really June of 2017. Uh, so Bruce Linton and I, uh, it, it was about two years before that, we had a big storm came through the neighborhood, a tree had fallen down. Uh, Bruce loves a chainsaw, so he was out there cutting up the tree and uh, went over to see what was happening. He's, you know, he says, Steve, the blade's not big enough on the uh, chainsaw to get the stump. Uh, so we kind of started thinking, you know what, probably a neighbor's got a bigger chainsaw, but we don't know that. And uh, we said we should make an app for that. So at that time, I was starting to build a company called Better Software. He was starting to build a company called Canopy Growth. Um, so we we're both kind of busy. And, um, you know, um, uh, so it took probably two years afterwards, which was uh, which was June 2017. Uh, we decided to start Ruckify. Um, took the first two years to really... Uh, you know, build out the technology. Uh, nobody had really ever done a rent anything marketplace before, a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So it was a big job in terms of just how would you do it? We had 12 go-to-market tests that we wanted to try. Um, so we spent two years, that ended last year. Um, and then we started building supply in 30 different cities uh, in North America. So we've ended up with about half a million items on the platform. And, you know, we, I mean, you, you talk about door knocking, there's a lot of door knocking. I mean, you're not physically knocking on doors, but you're reaching out to people over Facebook and just different social platforms, right? To see, to educate them on Ruckify, to see if they want to get their items up on Ruckify. Uh, you know, we've got the webinars. So there's a whole bunch of different things that we've tried. Um, and we're always looking for the most efficient way in terms of getting people on the platform. So, yeah. So we're right, still so door knocking. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, no, you know what, um, that I totally agree with that. In fact, you know, in the current digital age, you're, you're, you can, you're still door knocking, but you're door knocking on someone's Facebook messenger. You're door knocking on a LinkedIn yeah. account. Hey, um, I just came across your profile, interested in learning more about what you do, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, yes, yes, we still, we virtually door knock. Um, yep. in this, and especially with the COVID pandemic and all that. Now, you just dropped a name, which is kind of like, you know, saying, casually saying, yeah, when, when me and Elon Musk were, uh, you know, doing this, <laughs> cutting down trees, it's like, because Bruce Linton is basically like the Canadian Elon Musk, right? An yep. incredible, Literally. successful, uh, multimillionaire pioneer who created um, Canopy Growth Corporation, which became the most successful cannabis a company in Canada uh, became a publicly traded company is under the stock symbol weed I actually have uh, uh, probably like three or five clients that have have made 400% returns before we, we wow. exited the, our position in that uh, company and the whole I mean that was such a, a, a huge like international sensation right with creating because Canada was a unique opportunity that with, with Trudeau it actually became uh, leg passed legislation that people people could legally um, own, own cannabis products, and uh, I know I know I'm sure Justin was motivated too. With his brother had was killed in an avalanche, and was was um, you know something that was important to him. But um, the fact that you know Bruce became, and then and then he got like the um, endorsement from Snoop Dogg. On top of that, which was a huge spike in the when the when when he endorsed the the product, there was a, under Tweed. He there's a huge spike in that 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 stock. So. Um, Tell me a little bit how you know Bruce and, and what's your, 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 so is he like a neighbor of yours then? Yeah, so uh, I think we've lived, uh, he's about four doors down, uh, lived in, you know, in this neighborhood for about 17 years. So know him quite well. Uh, you know, but you, you talk about Bruce being an icon. I mean, look at that industry. And I think, you know, if you look at what, like that industry probably wouldn't exist without Bruce. You know, um, and if you look at when Bruce left Canopy, look at just the way the market went afterwards. Uh, there's still really nobody leading that industry the way Bruce led that industry, right? So he was the voice in the industry. He made people, um, he understood the industry so well and could share that with others. And, you know, they were buying into the future of the industry, which is still very strong, but there's nobody talking about it anymore after he left Canopy. So, uh, definitely iconic in, in the way that you're saying, no question about it. So, uh, so yeah. So in terms of Bruce, I mean, you know, uh, he's a, he's a really good person. So, uh, you know, uh, the day he got let go at Canopy, he was over, we were having drinks and, you know, he had Martha Stewart, like he had all these celebrities reaching out to him and, uh, 
you know, but the only kind of thing Bruce read out loud was, uh, you know, one of the maintenance people at Canopy that had started with him um, had sent him an email that night. And I know the, the person had gone through some life troubles. Bruce had given him a chance. Uh, the person, you know, because of that opportunity, the person was able to turn their life around. And, you know, Bruce, you know, instead of reading, you know, emails from maybe Martha Stewart or Snoop Dogg or anything else, you know, Bruce was reading this email from this gentleman and how heartfelt that was to him, how he impacted that person's life. And, well, uh, well it wasn't yeah. just a janitor, but it, he, he basically took a, a small town and turned oh, it yeah, over because exactly. Smith Falls with the yeah. uh, closing of the Hershey chocolate factory, he basically like rescued an entire town and actually created like how, I don't know how many jobs uh, he created there, but completely like transformed a whole town there to now like like the housing uh, prices went up there as a result. And it used to be kind of like a, you know, a, you know, it looks like you think of Smithfold, like it used to kind of be a bit of a sketchy area, but now he's like completely transformed into like a, a, a great industry. Yeah, and he's still involved in the town. He's still looking to boost the community. He bought a kind of an old post office there. He's fitted up a beautiful, beautiful building. Uh, you know, they were gonna be holding a bunch of plays there this year. Um, Anyway, so they've had to put it off because of COVID. So he's still, uh, even though he's not no longer with Canopy, he's still very much involved in trying to help that community. Now, speaking of, of uh, icons and your neighbors, uh, there's another uh, pretty well-known gentleman that uh, lives next door to you. And many, many of you might have known him as your, your favorite dragon, the most likable dragon on Dragon's Den. And, and, Bruce, and uh, uh, Steve, tell us about who your other neighbor is there. Oh, he's, so he's not a neighbor. He's a board member as an investor. Uh, so Joe Memoran. Uh, so if you think Club Monaco, think Joe Fresh. Uh, that's Joe. Um, so he actually hosted, co-hosted a webinar for, uh, for us yesterday. Uh, early investor in Rockify, current board member, and just another really good human being. I mean, if you sit with Joe, I mean, you, you always feel, uh, if you've ever seen Joe, you know, anytime... I stand beside him. You definitely feel underdressed because the guy dresses to the nines and looks looks really sharp, uh, but a really smart guy and just a really good human being. Yeah, well, I think I, I think actually saw he has a product line at Staples too that he sell. He endorses a bunch of products. I was actually referring to uh, Brett Wilson. I believe is uh, one of, mm -hmm. one of your uh, former Dragons. Dan, I should I should clarify that. But um, is Brett one of your neighbors? As no, nope. so Brett so Brett's out in Calgary. He's also an investor. But I thought you said he was just walking by your window or no, something. No, that was Bruce. Bruce. He goes oh, Bruce. Went, oh, he sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's uh, – that's it's, it's – uh, well, I'd love to uh, – I'd love to come to one of your dinner parties. Holy smokes. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> – um, No, that's, 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 that's really cool. So, um, so yeah, tell us about um, what you, your uh, – what, what's going on with Rectify. So, so you have a dragon doing a uh, – especially did a special presentation um, for your for your company what's going on with um, with the Ruckify community there yeah so I mean uh, he did a great job we had a, over 350 people registered for the webinar yesterday uh, you know to really spend an hour listening to Joe uh, learning out learning how to start kind of your ultimate side hustle uh, which is really uh, uh, taking stuff out of your garage out of your basement uh, you know starting your own Ruckify store and starting to rent things out so uh, you know, so that was really, really well attended, really well uh, received. Um, with Ruckify today, you know, we're, like I said earlier, uh, we're in 30 cities. So six cities in Canada, 24 in the U.S. Um, and just really, you know, post-COVID, our business has changed quite a bit. So um, we really feel that we're, we're helping. Uh, so we're, you know, there's a lot of people right now that need a little extra money. Um, so we're able to offer them an opportunity to start a, uh, the ultimate side hustle with literally no investment. Uh, if you have a chainsaw in your garage or, you know, a treadmill in your house, or maybe a wheelchair that you haven't used in a long time, uh, you can put those on Ruckify, make them available for rent. Uh, everything's insured and it doesn't cost you anything until you actually make money. Uh, and, and right now Ruckify is actually not even taking any fees. We're, uh, we're giving people that all that money back. So uh, so we're, we're aggressively expanding right now. Uh, we're expanding into different regions. We're opening up Florida. We're opening up California. 
Uh, we're very active in Texas. Uh, we're heading to Denver. Uh, so we have a lot happening. Uh, we're, we cover 23 different categories of products, 326 subcategory of products. Um, and uh, a couple of major things that we're adding later in the fall uh, we're going to be adding, you know, if you have a second car sitting around because you're working from home, you'll be able to rent your car out on Rockify. So I think that's a big opportunity. Uh, if you're tired of, tired of paying the high fees with Airbnb, you can actually put your cottage up on Rockify. Um, so it's really a rent anything marketplace. Wow, that is very fascinating. So let's say I wanted to um, rent out my tractor, um, my lawn tractor. What would be the next steps to, uh, you know, to, to uh, getting that set up on Rockify? Yeah, I mean, pretty easy. So you go to Rockify.com and you just, uh, top right hand corner, you can, uh, you want to post something. And uh, as you start posting, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to have to sign up to Rockify. And when people, whenever you sign up to Rockify, so whether you're going to post something and make it available for rent, or you want to rent something, you have to go through our verification process. So, and it's a pretty uh, extensive process uh we want to make sure you know we're not turning into a kijiji or or kind of an unsafe marketplace uh so we're checking criminal backgrounds things like that six percent of people who try to get on the platform actually can't um so we're doing a background check uh when you're coming on the platform uh, once you're okay with that and it's all instantaneous you wouldn't know what's happening uh once you're on the platform then you literally just go through the steps of of adding your platform you can you set your own rates. What's your daily rate? If you want to charge hourly, you can charge hourly, weekly, monthly. You can do special weekend rates. Uh, you know, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, you can say to somebody, you know, you have to pick the tractor up at my house, or you can say Rockify Express, which is us, uh, will actually take care of all the logistics. So we'll pick it up from your house and we'll deliver it to the person that's looking to rent it. Wow, that's amazing. And yeah. you're also getting into um, the a big part of your business right now is a boating uh, business or, you know, kayaks and, and boats. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's where you mentioned that, that things are picking up right now. People are on, on uh, getting into vacation mode then. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, you know, RVs right now are really big for us. Uh, so, you know, we have, I think about, I mean, we've got about 700 RVs on the platform right now. So we're looking to add a lot more just the demand probably in the last, four weeks has just gone through the roof. So RVs are very popular. Um, paddle boards are popular. Anything outdoor. People are just, they're tired of being in the house. And that, I mean, that's Ottawa, that's Calgary, that's Austin, you know, uh, that's Atlanta. Like it's really all over North America. We're seeing the same trend. Now, are you looking at any point to expand to Europe in the future or beyond North America? Yeah, I mean, right from day one, when, when, uh, when Bruce and I set this up, uh, we were thinking global domination, uh, no different than what Bruce did uh, in the canopy, uh, can uh, cannabis industry. Uh, we're going to do the exact same uh, with Rockify. So, uh, but North America right now is the focus. Uh, you know, we are planning to do a NASDAQ listing. Uh, so we kind of want to get through that. And then the, uh, you know, what we raise off of that listing will give us the fuel to kind of jump over the pond and, and share the Rockify experience over there. Okay, excellent. Now, do you, are you taking private investors right now, or is it just are you just going to wait until you go public, uh, and then and then people can invest in your company? Yeah, I mean, we, we do take on uh, all the investors that we have to date have been by invite only, uh, so we've been you know pretty careful in terms of of who invests. So uh, there are no VC, so it's all uh, high net worth individuals, family offices, uh, and people that really believe in the big vision in terms of what we're doing because it will take a lot of investment and it will take some time. Um, but you know, uh, but they understand that and they're patient with their money. So that's what we've done to date. Um, and we were planning uh, rock R U C K is our uh, symbol with NASDAQ. Um, we were planning to list uh, late fall uh, of this year on NASDAQ, still not out of the question. Um, you know, we weren't sure what happened, what was going to happen with COVID, but things have actually worked out much better than expected. So, so we'll see, we'll see how, how things go. Okay. Excellent. Well, I uh, appreciate your, and I mean, obviously you're working with, um, a, a man who's very experienced in this running, a you know, launching a publicly traded company oh, yeah. and then exiting that, that publicly traded company. Um, what, what, uh, so, uh, 
uh, typically most, uh, a lot of successful business, that's part of the succession plan is to one day to exit uh, the business. Um, do you foresee that one day or do you, do you uh, sort of hope to carry those shares to your grave? <laughs> you know what, I mean, you, you never, you never know what's gonna happen in the future. Uh, you know, I mean, the beautiful thing about what we do, no different than what Bruce did with Canopy, is 10% of the uh, uh, company is owned by everybody that works in the company. Um, you know, so when we do well, we all do well, uh, I think is really important. So that, that, that's our team members and our shareholders. Uh, so that's probably the most important thing. Uh, I'm personally, I'm definitely in this for the long haul. Abs you know, I mean, there's no better feeling uh, then I, you know, I can give you a couple of examples. We had somebody that was bound to a wheelchair and uh, I remember her sending a message in saying she wanted to thank whoever started Rockify because for the first time ever, you know, she was able to earn an income on her own. Uh, so being able to just rent things out and uh, like, that's pretty special. Uh, or, you know, we just, there's a UFC gym in Austin. I know uh, with COVID, they were shut down. And, but, you know, with Rockify, they were able to take all their equipment, make it available for rent, uh, and they were able to pay their rent. Um, you know, so that was, you know, so there's a lot of good things that we're able to do with Rockify. Uh, we have a huge in initiative with United Way, uh, collecting thousands of digital devices, uh, and then, you know, using our platform uh, so that United Way can leverage it and give it out to different people in the community where, you know, laptops are literally lifelines. Uh, you know, if you, maybe there's a mental health issue or maybe you need to continue going to school, but you can't afford a computer, uh, you know, we're able to help in that process. And that, that feels really, really good. So why would you stop doing that? Excellent. Well, that, it sounds like you're, you're changing the world for the better. And just yeah. like, you know, Bruce says with Canopy Growth, you know, for those people taking uh, cannabis products for their health as well too, you know, it's great when yeah. you can, can do, you know, create a, a product or service that has that to social responsibility element to that. So yeah, congratulations, great success. So in all the years you've, you've run in business, what would be your number one um, best practice you would say to someone who's, uh, you know, uh, looking to, uh, you know, get their business up and running? Um, what, what's the most important thing would you say for, for them, like for, for marketing or promoting their business? Well, I mean, I think you have to hustle. You always have to hustle. So, you, you, I mean, you know, first thing I think uh, as an entrepreneur, you, got, you have to first decide what do you want the outcome to be? So do you want this job to give you a little, just a little extra income? Uh, you know, do you want it to give you freedom or do you want to take over the world? So if, you know, I mean, if you just want a little extra money, then it's all relative in terms of how much time and effort you're going to put into it. Uh, if you're looking to take over the world, you really have to commit. It's got to be a lifestyle. Uh, it's got to be what you kind of wake up thinking about and what you go to sleep thinking about. So, you know, figure out what you want the outcome to be first. And that'll, <clears throat> that'll kind of give you a sense of what type of effort you need to put into it. Um, and then it's literally just hustle. And you talked about door knocking. I don't think door knocking ever stops. Whether you're trying to raise money, you're trying to get people to understand your platform or whatever business it is, you're always door knocking. So you're always out hustling, telling your story, getting people engaged. And I think the third thing is, you know, you can't give up. Yeah, I mean, the way you initially think you're going to, you know, what you're going to do with your business may not be the way it actually works out. Uh, so you probably have to change things up kind of along the way, uh, but there is always a way. <clears throat> so there's always a way to kind of, you know, just figure out how to make it work. So now, now one of the biggest challenges for very successful business owners like yourself, <clears throat> it comes down to time management and focus. How do you uh, manage those, those two areas? Because with, with all these, so, so much going on with your business, and I mean, you imagine you probably have a personal life as well. Like, how do you manage, uh, how do you manage your time? Yeah, I mean, again, it comes down to what do you want the outcome to be? And the second thing there is, you know, the, the better, the better the people that you surround yourself with, the kind of the more time you're going to have. So I think it's really important when you're looking for people to add to the team, um, especially if you're going to put them in any type of leadership position, is if you have good people, it gets to be a lot easier. So no question. And we're, and you know, 
and you have to treat them well, right? You have to give them ownership in the company. You have to, I mean, they're giving up their time as well and they're working hard. Uh, so you have to make it worth their while. Uh, like a, you know, just a salary doesn't always make that happen. So they got to buy in for what you're doing, believe in what you're doing, feel really good about it and also be rewarded for it. So. Excellent. And I think you nailed on the head the fact that you are giving them ownership in the company. Same for the firm that I'm with too. Like we become partners in the firm. So you're, you're different when you're an owner versus an yeah. employee, right? It's a, it's a different, uh, for, it's a completely different game there that, uh, that, that regard. So, um, so we talked about your business, any, any, uh, you know, more bigger picture goals that you have? I mean, obviously you're changing the world. You're, you're helping people, uh, make money, but any other, um, like what, what would you say your biggest why is, uh, in, in your business? Uh, you know, my biggest, <clears throat> I think uh, over the years, uh, what I like best is, you know, if somebody starts working with us and, you know, maybe they're, they just have a lot of hustle and they're, you know, they're smart, they're good people, uh, but they haven't done a lot yet. And is to really see them kind of blossom and, uh, just become better uh, at whatever they do. It's really cool. So uh, we had their webinar yesterday and we had somebody on, his name is Rob. And he worked with us 25 years ago. And I haven't talked to him in 25 years. And uh, uh, he worked for uh, one of our other companies, but it was really just nice to have him on and to see how far he's come and how well he's done. And you know, if you can create something that makes other people better, that's, I don't know that it gets any better than that. So it's not about the money. Uh, you know, like at some point who cares about money? Uh, it's more about, you know, what you're giving back to the community and what you're giving back to other people. Well, that's fantastic, Stephen. And, uh, I can tell you, you have, have a big heart there in terms of what the great work that you and Bruce are doing with, uh, with Ruckify. Um, I'll now, uh, I take this opportunity to open the floor up if there's any, uh, questions, uh, from our, our participants today, or any questions or comments? Yeah, hi Steve. Um, you and I had the pleasure of meeting a few years ago with uh, when you had Cody Mobile. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. Uh, I was doing yeah, I was doing some work at the Auto Show, and uh, it was great. To, so it's great to see hear about Ruckify. It's a fantastic concept, I think. Um, yeah. Just wanted, thank you. Just wanted to know what uh, Steve. What were some of your biggest challenges in in getting it uh, up and running? What did you know? You had an idea. You took it from the garage to the to the reality how what were some of the challenges that getting it getting it started oh man i mean there were a lot of challenges uh i mean number one is when you start something that nobody else has done before it's like walking in a in a room with the lights out right so you've got to kind of just navigate your way around uh but i think we saw <clears throat> we solved that uh, by making sure we had patient money uh, so kind of a hard thing to take money from investors and say, you know what, we're just going to build a product for two years and we're going to do go to mark, uh, 12 go to market tests. And we're not really worried about revenue. You know, a lot of people would be, oh, what do you mean you're not worried about revenue? But we knew if we focused on revenue, uh, that would be the wrong thing. So we had to focus on figuring it out, uh, which we're still literally doing to this day, but we figured out a lot of things. So I think it was probably the biggest challenge was being able to make sure uh, that we were able to get the right type of funding that was patient so that we could build it out. I mean, if you look at Walmart, you know, like people think a Canopy is, is probably one of the fastest companies in terms of, you know, going from zero to 20 billion or 17 billion, whatever it was, I think in, in four years, which is astronomical. But Sam Walton didn't build his second store until the 11th year. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so things take time. Yeah, I think the uh, biggest challenge too when, uh, when you're raising money is that you get the VCs in there who come in looking for a quick hit and they're not, you know, it, it is a patient business. You need patient money. I think that's a really, uh, a really important part. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, your network and how do you build out your network? Like, what, how do you get people on the ground in those particular areas? Do you find a, a person who's interested in, that, in the business in that area and then let them build it out? Or how, do you, how, do you, how do you grow the business in that respect? I, I think, you know, a big part of it is, uh, not, I don't really look at it like growing the business. I think we're growing people and the people will grow the business. So, uh, you know, when we started Ruckify, I would do probably four to six coffees a day at Starbucks. And I would just literally meet one person after the other. 
And, you know, then it was just like a feeling like this person's right. And I think they can come on. They've got some energy. You know, are they smart? Are they curious? Curious is a huge thing because we're trying to, you know, if, we, if people aren't curious, then we're, I'll, I'll be the only guy trying to figure things out. Um, and they had to be good people. Are you involved in the community? Like, you know, what, what do you do for your community? So those were the three things we looked for. Um, and that was really early on. And that kind of set the foundation. And now we're able to really build off of that foundation. It's still the most important part. Uh, we're looking right now, I think we're hiring 24 people, uh, but we're taking our time, right? So, uh, and, and really still looking for those three characteristics. Right. So uh, this is a question I actually, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to, to ask you, you know, and this is something also, I, I was always, always wondering about groups. Like I was overall, like, how do you build out your team? Like, do you sort of have like an overarching structure? You have a vision for where you want, or like, how do you place people into different positions? Like, how do you, what's the, what's the, um, I mean, obviously Bruce has a lot of experience with this as well with uh, Canopy Growth, but what's the, um, what, what is your overall strategy for building out your team? Yeah. So, I mean, every business you start, I think is really the same. Uh, you know, when you start a business, you're looking for really good generalists. So you're looking for people that can wear a lot of hats and do a lot of things. Uh, and then you've got to kind of, you know, watch what they're doing, uh, listen to them and try to over time steer them into where they can do best. Um, you know, so your business will start with generalists and over time, as you start to grow, you're going to start looking for specialists. Give you an you know uh, an idea. You know you, uh, when you start, you might have one person on your marketing team. They have to do Google AdWords. They have to do SEO. They have to build your website. So they're doing all these things. Over time, you know you have a content person. You have a SEO person. You have a you know you have an AdWords person. So those are specialists. So that would be phase two, and then phase three is you know, with these specialists start bringing on generalists again. So you're kind of, kind of building the company that way. So really just important on, early on. Mm -hmm. and, and just on top of that, what about working with, um, do you believe in, in like uh, virtual uh, members of your team that may be like sort of like virtual assistants or maybe in, in other parts of the world, but um, are you, uh, or do you prefer to work with local people? Yeah. Well, so, maybe, uh, you know, I can answer something else at the same time. So definitely don't believe in contractors. Uh, somebody really has to get under the hood and understand your business. Uh, I've never, ever hired anybody on contract. Uh, they've met well, uh, but they just don't know enough to be able to deliver value, right? So that's kind of the first thing. Um, and then in terms of virtual, um, our team, we were about 81 people. We had an office in Canada. Uh, because of COVID, we've ended that lease. We have people in Austin. So we have people around North America uh, that are on the team. And it's, we always found it difficult uh, to work with people remotely until our whole team became remote. Uh, so today we have no office. We're 100% remote. And because we're going to be a global company, uh, we're going to stay remote. So I think that, uh, you know, it was when you had an office there was too much kind of water cooler talk and things like that so uh if you weren't at the office you're kind of you weren't in the nitty-gritty now we've had to set everything up so that we're all equal and i think that that's been one of the really good things that's happened to our company so would you say that this whole pandemic was almost a blessing in disguise for for Rockify? oh yeah like uh, i mean you hit, i mean you, you always you know when something bad happens you want to look for good and we've had a lot of good there's no question so number one is we're remote uh monday uh two days ago that it was our best day ever for new users joining up to the platform sales volume lead volume so our business literally gets better day by day and the really nice part about it is we were spending about two or three hundred thousand a month on marketing pre-covid uh now we don't spend any more than ten thousand a month so you know, and we're having our best days ever. So it's, it's pretty good. Excellent. Well, that's congratulations on your, your fantastic success. Any other further questions or comments from our participants for, for Kenzel? I just had one more thing, Steve. Um, I think you got the perfect 2020 model uh, for a business right now because of <laughs> online and uh, the fact of the way yeah. the world's going. And I think, you know, the awareness thing about where people can actually rent from their neighbor, which is a, that's a very uh, unique concept because it's the most important challenge in rental was trying to find.
on it. So that's uh, really great. I, I was interested in where do you see the, how do you see the business uh, growing? I know you see talking about across the pond. Do you, do you see this as something that everybody could be a partner in as far as, you know, having a, your own little ruckified business in your little town somewhere? Is that the way, is that the way you see it rolling out? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, you know, today we talk about owning a business and, you know, like a little Ruckify store or making a little bit of money. But I think at some point, uh, people are going to look at ownership being a little bit differently. So today, you know, we've always thought like, I'm going to go out and buy a boat. Well, okay, what's my monthly payment? Is That's kind of, the, you know, can I afford it? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, Ruckify is going to change that. Okay, I'm going to go out and buy a boat. And instead of having a monthly payment, what am I going to make on that boat? Like, what's my revenue going to be? And when you start thinking about ownership that way, that's a pretty power, powerful way. You know, I, I'm going to buy a car. Well, I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to like what rents, you know, what cars rent the best on the platform? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the way I'm going to buy a car. How can I make the most money uh, with the car I'm going to buy? And that, that really changes things when you start thinking, I think that way. So uh, looking yeah, at a new car. Yeah. That's true. That's going to change the whole dynamic. I think the whole paradigm, because, you know, you think people think about bed and breakfast, but now they can rent anything, which is like, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So I think yeah. give you a lot of, a lot of credit for it. I think it's a fantastic concept and uh, pleasure being here today to hear the story. Thank you. Thank you for being on. Yeah. Thanks so much, Steve. This has been fantastic. You've been giving us a lot of great takeaways. Really appreciate your time this morning and sharing your best practices and congratulations to your continued success. And I wish you, wish you all the best, and we'll, we'll be seeing you again soon. All right, Paul. Thanks very much. Have a great day.